Sasaki is approaching the front of the space. I would love to introduce you all to who we have cooking tonight. So I'd like to get all of our chefs to come out to the front, please. that you enjoy, the chickpeas and popcorn, and then Jerry Rolls right now are done by Eden. Another interesting thing, the butter itself is clarified butter. Uh, I usually clarify my butter using cardamom, fenugreek, uh, sage. For different meat sauces, I use different types of clarified butter. For this one, we're using cardamom. Uh -huh. And uh, I think there is uh, some kind of turmeric or fenugreek. Yeah. in the butter as well. And then you know all these aromas are kind of from the spice tea. It's very nice. Tasty. You will taste it more. Did you is this a dish that you grew up with that was really important to you? It's very important, especially the sauce. Yeah. In my father's house when I was a kid, we didn't eat a lot of chicken. Yeah. My mom doesn't like chicken. But we ate lamb and goats and beef. Yeah. Wow. As you know, maybe some of you know Ethiopian food, Eritrean food, there's a lot of vegetable yeah. dishes that are really wonderful. My, I grew up with my grandmother like making dorowat at the house yeah. in, the, in those really big pots, but yeah. she would make it you know, all day. Yeah, we all day. onions and we had this big um, propane stove that we'd set outside yeah. and everyone would come over and they'd be like, she'd make dorowat for a yeah. hundred, like it nothing. Takes it takes a long time. Yeah. There's no food that I know Ethiopian except Katenya. Yeah. That is quick. It takes a long time. Very, very laborious. Yeah. Labor yeah. of love. 
but it's like so slow and so the flavors are all so, so rich. It's deep and rich. Very, very deep. Flavor. And if you, the smell will linger on your fingers yeah, because you're gonna use your fingers to eat it, right? For a long time, maybe three days, unless you wash it. Yeah. I can't wait. You know, when my grandmother would make it, we'd be able to smell. I mean, you can smell the dodo walking up the street. Yes. That's how I know where the elephants <laughs> are living. When you walk through Oakland, in you London, just smell in it. In London, if I pass an Eritrean or Ethiopian uh, household, House. uh, there's one coffee smell. Yeah. And number two is the onion smell. Yeah. We don't yeah. care. We smell like onion. All the time. All Love the time. It. What's a awesome <laughs> with this? Um, of course, uh, like I said before, the chicken and the eggs are going to go in, but you will eat this with injera, which is, um, a, uh, I don't know how to, to say it, but you have to ferment it for okay. three days. Usually we ferment it for three days back home. And we use this indigenous seed. Yeah. I'm sure they have it here nowadays. It's called egg. I think I've, I've seen it as yeah. one of the superfoods. Yeah. Um, I don't think it has gluten, so these people who are using this gluten-free diet are using it nowadays. You, saw, you kind of uh, ferment it for three days, and then it becomes a bit sour. You can leave it for five days and make it really sour if you want to, but usually it's three days. And then um, you have to make fresh injera every three days in the household. So it's the main, uh, how can you say, carbohydrate source. You can eat it from all types of sources, vegetable sources, meat sources, and this one is chicken sauce, which is called Doro. It's Sagib's choice, this one. I would have made maybe lamb. But the same process goes. The same sauce and then you put the different process. Have you eaten Ethiopian food before? Ethiopian food? Have you eaten it? Have you tasted Ethiopian food? Um, no? Yes. The cameraman is not allowed to get involved. <laughs> The store is on. No, no, I was just saying we'll finish prepping today. The store is on here. It's going to take some to uh, Gosetra. Or we can also leave it all here and come back again in the morning. Uh, that's it. What do you want to start working on the chicken? I'm going to start working on Okay.
for instance, like vegetarians have been doing for a very, very long time, and no one calls it organic. You just okay. have a farm, or you know, it's just yes. called eating and living. And so I think that the term may be new, but I think the the actual ex experience of it or awareness. existence of it awareness. has been going on for like centuries upon centuries. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. My father, my grandfather, was a pastoralist. He had cattle. He had land. He followed the rain in two places, mm -hmm. and there wasn't even any question about food not being fresh or mm -hmm. not yeah. having the food. Yeah. Yeah, they just grow and eat. Was that a measuring cup? The land is there. Measuring cups. They even go across uh, the country uh, to feed their cattle, and, yeah, no, and they have they have two cows, two homes. They follow the rain, so there's one, I think it's the monsoon rain, and another one is a local rain. So they go taking their couples to one side sometimes, and then they come back to the other side. God's land, basically. There's no question. Nobody owns it. Yeah. It's in the commons. No? The commons? Everyone. Yeah, everybody. I mean, they have their own area, what they go back to. But I don't think they bought it. What's happening here is that we're kind of working back against a lot of processed foods. Mm -hmm. Like over the past few decades, there's been more and more processed food yes. in our diet here in the United States. Yes. And more and more people are kind of realizing that all this processed food is having a bad effect yes. on our bodies. Yeah. So I think people are kind of getting aware of that and trying to have a feeling against that, you know? Like recently, uh, in rural parts of El Salvador, uh -huh. they've been getting more uh, access to processed foods. Kids' teeth are starting to rot up, and so people are kind of becoming aware that that's a problem. And some people are trying to take action against that. You know? So maybe uh, that's why it's kind of a more uh, crazy. Even, even I, uh, in my own time, I lived in the city all my life. Yeah. But I ate maybe tomato paste as processed. Yeah. That's the only thing I remember. Yeah. Tomato, canned tomato. But otherwise, I never, I don't remember eating processed food. Everything was fresh. The whole message that we're going, what we're trying to do during the, through the, through the dinner, is trying to present different generations of migration in the African diaspora and different ways of uh, connecting to that food through, food through the foods of the diaspora. And we'll, the goal of it is to present like this way of um, decolonization through food and through connecting back with roots. And then we're going to, throughout while we're serving the meal tomorrow, there's also going to be um, performances and uh, speakers throughout the whole process. Okay. okay. I'm going to make something, a snack called the Katenya. I don't know what it is in, uh, I can't remember what it is in Amharic, which uh, language that I grew up with, but my mother called it Katenya. I think it's something similar. It's a snack, basically. You don't find it in host uh, restaurants because it's a kind of a home snack, quick snack your mother would make you after uh, she bakes the injera. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna make tonight, yeah? So I have the injera here that we bought from, uh, an Ethiopian market. As you can see, it looks like so. And then here we have clarified butter. We bought the butter already clarified from the Ethiopian market, but I added cardamom and warmed it a little bit because cardamom makes it even uh, tastier. I know it's a lot of butter, but it's tasty. That you see, the spice you see there. As I said, the butter was clarified using sage and other things like um, maybe fenugreek and uh, uh, turmeric. And I added cardamom into it. So I roasted the cardamom first a little bit and I ground it and boiled it one more time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pour the butter here. I don't know how this is going to work. I have not tried it this way, but I'll try my best to make it work. Usually you use lashings and lashings of butter. So, there you are. 
and then I'm going to sprinkle some of this berbere. It's going to be like a, a beginning of the meal. As I said, it's not a usual thing that you serve in a restaurant or even special occasions. This is just a kind of a, a home snack. If your mom was making injera, when it's still fresh, she would make you katenya. Since I'm going to put it in the oven, the butter is going to melt and go through the whole of injera. I hope. It's like it was helping me to be a little bold. Usually I would not make things like this for a large audience. I'm good, but um, yes, I need help. You know what I need help with? What do you need? I need um, the trays to bake this thing on. Oh, you're baking it? Yeah, yes, I'm cutting these things and baking it. Thank you, darling. Let me put it here. Yeah. There you are. Uh -uh, like one inch, two in inches. Okay, you yeah, you can do that. Yeah, use your own uh, style and imagination. <laughs> exactly. This is fusion, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so we're mixing things up. That's wonderful. That now, what I want to, you to do is turn it like sushi. Yeah. And then? The ends, what do you think? That's good. It's a little bit floppy. That's good. You just okay. leave it there, yeah. Support it with the, the other crutches. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just put it in the oven for a short time to crisp a little bit, to, bat, to, to melt the butter. And then we're done. The crowd over there is just a support crowd. Yeah. That's it. Wow, it's how wonderful. Hours. How wonderful it is. Yeah. All this an army of young people. It's really sweet. It's very sweet. And Saikiv is the boss. 